If you're anything like me, you might find yourself planning for your next adventure in the midst of a global quarantine as your luggage collects dust in the corner. <laughs> We're clearly the glass half full type of people. With the idea of a road trip on my mind, I've been having fun mapping out what my vacation might look like, and I thought I'd share with you guys a tool that I've found to be really helpful. So when I first went to plot out my road trip, I went to Google Maps, but where I actually wanted to be was Google My Maps. So I'm gonna show you what that interface looks like. I'm gonna launch Google Chrome here, and the very first thing you wanna do is make sure you're signed into your Gmail account. So wherever you log into Google from here on out, whether it's a different computer or an app, you'll be able to access the maps that you created within Google. So I'm logged in just in the Google search bar. I'm gonna type my maps. This is how I get to it. Top link there. And here we go, here's our blank slate. So whatever maps you create, no matter how many, they'll all show and display here. Um, right now we're just going to do one map. Now I find this really fun to do online because I grew up camping with my family. We had a motor home, we went cross country a couple of times and I remember my parents having that big road atlas that was usually wedged in the passenger side door but I, I do remember my parents pulling that out and, and plotting where we wanted to go as we were on the road. Um, which, you know, if I went on a road trip now, I'd still probably bring that thing, but it is fun to organize it online and have a digital copy as well. So let's get started. This is a really easy interface to navigate. I'm gonna go ahead and label this and let's do an American Southwest road trip. There we go. And I'm gonna create a couple of layers and I think I'll start with destinations. Let's lay out a couple of destinations. So the cool thing about using the Google interface is you don't necessarily need to know the addresses for anything. You can just do a quick search and it will automate some suggestions of what you might be looking for. So I'm gonna go for Sedona, Arizona. Now this drops a pin here, but you actually have to add it to your map. It's, it's not there yet. So I'm gonna hit that feature and you can see that Sedona has dropped into my destinations layer. I'm gonna add two more spots, Grand Canyon. And let's do Zion. Have you guys been to these places? They are incredible and I cannot wait to go back. There we go. And you know what, while I'm in destinations, I'm gonna add the airports that I'm flying into. The idea for this road trip is I'm flying into Phoenix and I will be flying out of McCarran in Vegas. and obviously renting a car between those destinations. So let's zoom all the way out. We can see what our map looks like so far. There we go. Just by looking at this view, I can see that I will be flying in here, working my way up north and looping back down to the Vegas area. The map is cool. It looks a little cluttered to me, so you can actually change the view of the map itself whatever you think is easiest to read. I actually find this dark one to just be the simplest looking one and um, the most organized for me anyway. All right, so we've got our destinations. Let's make another layer for accommodations. And by the way, I'm ignoring this yellow tab that you may have seen pop up earlier. You can import your data from elsewhere, I think from spreadsheets. I haven't actually used that feature, so I'm not gonna pretend to know anything about it, but I am a spreadsheet person, so I'm sure I'll find this useful in the future. I'm just not going to pretend to know anything about it at this point. Plus, I wanna show you what this program looks like just op operating in it manually. So let's name this layer accommodations. Just to pause for a second, I wanna say that I don't use this program to research it necessarily. I've kind of done my research separate from this um, and I'm coming here after the fact when I know the things that I wanna see, what I wanna do, where I wanna be and laying it all out on this map. Um, you can search in this within this interface because it is Google, but I don't know, that's just not my workflow. And I'll show you how I do that in a little bit, just in case that's how you guys wanna operate. But let's start out, I know the hotels I wanna stay at. I'm gonna start typing them out here. Hilton in Sedona, perfect, add to map. El Tovar, hotel, add to map. 
in Zion Canyon Lodge. Great. And you can see as I was doing that, they dropped into the accommodations area. Occasionally they will go into the wrong layer. Um, I think that's because all of these layers are turned on at the moment, so it might accidentally drop into the wrong layer. I just wanna show you, you can drag and drop these wherever you need it to be if it ends up in the wrong spot. So let's zoom all the way up. <clears throat> Great, now by looking at this view, I can't really distinguish what is a hotel and what is the overall destination at this point. So you can customize what your icons look like. I'm gonna turn these hotels into little yellow symbols. It's a pretty neat feature. Also, you can turn layers on and off. So if you knew you just want to see where you're, st like what hotels or campgrounds you're staying in, you could turn off destinations and just look at your accommodations on the map. All right, and I'm gonna add one more layer just to give you guys an idea of different things you can do. And this will be, sorry, there's a motorcycle going by. I don't know if you guys can hear that, <laughs> uh, activities. And let's do, I'm gonna do two examples here. I know that I loved hiking Devil's Bridge Trail in Sedona. So I'm going to find that, add to map. And there is a trail that I loved in the Grand Canyon and I'm gonna use this opportunity to show you the search feature. If I hit Grand Canyon, I'm kind of in that area. There we go. So. If I was looking for a trail I wanted to do in the Grand Canyon, I can have this view open here and I can type hiking and it will search places near this current view. And it's not gonna give you everything. It's gonna give you, I guess, the most popular or just the ones that are, however Google prioritizes things, but let's check out and see what they've got. South Rim. So I was actually looking for a trail that did not pop up on this map. I do know the name, Bright Angel Trail. Add to map. Yeah, I don't know why it didn't pop up in the search and that is why I don't use this search function within Google here. I tend to do my research offline or at least off of this website. And I see that it accidentally dropped into destination, so I'm gonna drag that down to activities. And similar to what we did with accommodations, I'm just going to kind of color code this so it's easier for me to see. And two different greens, and that's all right. Okay. Great, so this is our map. Now, we're all here because we wanna figure out the road trip itself. How long is the drive between each destination? And um, with that, how long you might wanna spend in each destination specifically. So, how do we do that? We're gonna go up here, you know what? Let me turn off. I'm just gonna map this road trip with the destinations only, not necessarily the hotels. So if I come up here to this arrow, add directions. And I'm gonna select where I wanna start my trip. Phoenix, Sky Harbor, jump down to B, so that's Sedona. Add destination, let's move up to North Rim. Add destination, zoom out a little bit. Okay. Interface is being a little clunky right now. <laughs> okay, did that click? Yes, there it is. All right, so that is our road trip. And let me change the base map view. I just wanna show you a cool thing. If you knew, for example, that this road had some really cool site that you wanted to see, you can hover over this road and drag it to where you want it to go. 
So I believe this kind of organizes it by fastest route, I think, but you can move the road wherever you, you would like to drive. Now that we have our road laid out, we wanna know the timing between each destination. So I'm gonna go over here in the directions layer and hit step-by-step -step directions. And there we go. This trip is a total of 793 miles, 14 hours, and it breaks it down into directions between each destination on the map, how long that drive time is gonna be, and that just gives me the best idea of what my road trip's gonna look like. And that is how easy this interface is to use. Now, before I sign off, I wanna show you two, two more cool features that may be able to help you guys. Let's turn accommodations back on and activities, for example. I'm gonna change my base map back to the view that I prefer. So in Sedona, let's say I know I wanna wake up on Wednesday morning and head out to the trail. I don't necessarily wanna add this road to my road map. It's just something I'm doing during the day. It's not part of my overall drive. I could take this tape measure right here, hit the destination I'm start, or hit the location that I'm starting at and drag it to the destination I'm ending at. And that's easily displaying nine and a half miles. So it gives me a, a rough estimate of how far apart these places are. It's good on the fly too. Like if you're, you're somewhere and you wanna know where is this restaurant and how long is it gonna take me to get there, you can easily lay that out on the map. And you just hit escape on your keyboard to exit that feature. Similarly, the other thing I want to show you is you can add a marker. So let's say you knew grandma lived in Cornville <laughs> and you want to visit her. You don't know your exact address, but you want to put it on your map as a reminder that, hey, grandma's in town. You may want to stop there. You may not, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> so you're going to hit that and you can customize that right there. Oh. Not sure why that's not typing. There we go. Grandma's house. When you hit save, you can see it generates that exact longitude and latitude. Again, this may not necessarily be grandma's house, but it's just a way to put a marker on the map for something you may be considering doing. And if you decide, hey, don't feel like visiting grandma this time, you can hit delete feature and it takes it right off your map. And once you have this map generated, let's take a step back here. Here it is, it's within your Google My Maps and you can access it anywhere, where, whether it's on a desktop or out on the road through an app. So it is easily accessible, easily changeable, and a great tool for your future road trip. Music